Today we are going to discuss finite difference formulations of parabolic partial differential equations. So parabolic PDEs and we are interested in some finite difference formulations. So consider one dimensional diffusion equation or one dimensional heat equation partial u by d equals to alpha times second order partial derivative with respect to the space coordinate x. Of course, this need to be solved with the help of some initial condition and two boundary conditions. So if you recall the previous lecture, we have developed finite difference formulations for first order and second order partial derivatives. So for a first order partial derivative, we could have three types of differencing, forward differencing, backward differencing, or central differencing. So based on the differencing chosen, uh, we could develop different schemes. So the first scheme that I would like to share is the forward in time and central in space. also abbreviated as FTCS, forward in time, central in space. So let me give you some notations that I will be following. This is the unknown U. For the space coordinates, I will use subscript. And for the time coordinate, I'll use superscript. So this N will be representing time and this IJ, this is for space variation, space coordinates. So of course, if N is the present time, N minus one index will represent the past and N plus one will represent future. So this is present, future, and this is past. Similarly, if this is the location i, if we move forward, we will be having i plus one. If we move backward, we will be having i minus one. So at the moment, we have one dimensional problem in space coordinate. So we don't need this second index j. But if you have a two dimensional parabolic equation or two dimensional heat problem, then of course you need this second index. So at the moment life is simple. So we design forward in time mean we move forward in time divided by delta t alpha and we need second order partial derivative that you may recall from the previous video. So u i plus one minus twice u i plus u i minus one divided by delta x scale. Since we are dealing with partial differential equations, so when we wanna compute change with respect to time, we need to freeze the space coordinate. So here we are going to freeze this location i. And similarly, when you are moving in space, so you have to freeze the time coordinate. Here is the time level n. So this is actually FTCS scheme. Forward in time, central in space. So let us perform some operations to get some formulation that we need to code in some MATLAB program. So u i n plus one after some algebraic calculations, you could write like this plus alpha delta t by delta x whole square 
u i plus one minus twice u i plus u i minus one at the time level m. Okay, so far so good. So this is the solution at location i and at time level n plus 1. So this updated solution in the next time level depends upon the solution at the previous time level. You see all indices are n. So such kind of schemes where all the information comes from the previous time level or from the previous iteration, they are known as explicit schemes. So in explicit schemes, the updated solution is a function of previous solution. So the solution vector at time level n plus one is a function of solution at the time level n. So this is meaning of explicit scheme. So FTCS is an explicit scheme. So Whenever you have some explicit scheme, there are some limitations that we will explore in future videos, but just to have some flavor of the limitations, see this factor, alpha delta t by delta x whole scale. In order to have a stable numerical scheme, this factor, this must be less than or equals to one by two for FTCS scheme. So if this factor alpha delta t by del x square let me write it for the sake of simplicity as like mu. So mu must be less than or equals to half for stability. If you choose delta t and delta x in such a way that this expression is greater than half, then the scheme won't be stable. This is unstable. So a scheme which works only for some limited values of the selection of delta t and delta x are for this combination that give rise to uh, this condition. They are called conditionally stable schemes. Conditionally stable scheme. So FTCS is a conditionally stable scheme. That means it will not work in every situation. So whenever you are writing a code and you are setting the parameters, time step and space step, you need to consider this stability requirement. If this is not fulfilled, then the error will be growing from iteration to iteration and this scheme will be unstable. The solution will be unbounded. So let us move towards the computational stencil of this scheme. So this is time level n. This is time level n plus one. So we are interested in the computation of solution at this node i at time level n plus one. And if you look at this formula, the solution at time level n plus one at this node can be computed by feeding all this information. 
So this information is coming from the previous time level and from three grid points, the location i, location i minus one, and location i plus one. So here is the location i, this is i plus one, and this is i minus one. So if you feed in your code the information from these nodes, So you can compute solution at this grid point. Similarly, if location i changes to this point, then you need to feed information from this node, this node, and of course, from this node. So this is computational stencil for FTCS. So we are done. We just need to code this scheme to implement for this heat equation. So whenever you are choosing time step and space, and of course alpha will be given in your problem. So you have to have this combination alpha delta t by delta x square. This must be less or equals to half for stability. Otherwise, you will get some spurious oscillations or maybe some negative concentrations if you are dealing with, dealing with concentration problems. So you have to have this condition, which is the stability requirement for this scheme. So mostly all explicit schemes suffer from the stability requirement. That's why we will be moving towards implicit schemes in future videos. So that's it for today. Thank you very much.